if I had the same problem now as an 18 year old as I did then with access to the internet and apps on my phone, I would probably be dead. How often do you bet? Uh, every weekend. How much have you won? Nothing. How often do you bet? Every week. Every week? Yeah. How much have you won this season? Uh, about 300. 300? No, yeah, yeah. You just do it for entertainment? No. What, what do you do it for? To win the to, money. To, yeah, to make money. You put a pound on an accumulator, yeah. and how much did you win? Uh, 3,800. 3,800 pounds off a pound accumulator? In 2018, I was 1,500 down on one account. I've tried to cut down, but how it's How many still accounts have you got? 25, 30 accounts. It cost me university. I lost a grand in like a day. I kind of got into the spiral of losing control and literally letting the um, money just flow. Um, you were chasing... Yeah, chasing losses. We've known each other for quite a while. Well, we've never talked frankly about your uh, addiction to gambling before, have we? Well, I haven't really spoken about it. I've tried to write about it, but it's something that it means too much to be funny about it, I guess. It's yeah. part of my life pre-comedy, I guess. So you started at the age of 17, 18? 16, 17. And how did you get into it? What was what? Fruit machines in pubs. Really? Yeah. For me, it was a way of switching my brain off. As soon as I was stood in front of a fruit machine, it was just like, just like flicking a switch where I didn't think about anything. What made you go to Gambler's Anonymous? Like, it, I could the it, the situation was getting very out of control, uh, and I was very desperate, um, self harming. Um, so this would have been around sort of ninety nine two thousand. But over the course of going, the, uh, the makeup of the groups that I went to got progressively younger. Really? And as gambling moved online, a lot more women um, started going. If you were 18 or 19 now, um, and you were just becoming aware of gambling with what's around you, how, how would you fare, do you reckon? If I had the same problem now, as an 18-year-old as I did then, with access to the internet and apps on my phone, I would probably be dead because I would have killed myself. And what's quite scary is that in all the progress we've made on understanding problem gambling, it's actually easier to become one now than it was 15, 20 years ago. They are the dreamers, the glory seekers. We had a bit of a, not an altercation, but I, I think it's four or five years ago when I did the Labrooks Life, I got a tweet from, from you. And we're friends, we've been friends for a number of years. And you were annoyed about that advert because it portrayed this false lifestyle of these five chaps that all have these different kind of uh, betting mm. habits. But I, I complained to the Advertising Standards Authority about that advert. Did you? Yeah, and a lot of people did. And the complaints that they upheld were about billboards. So these were alongside the video, and one of them said something like, the first time it's luck, the second time it's skill. Which is such a dangerous, irresponsible wow. and powerful message wow. to basically go to someone, if you win money, that means you're special, you've got something special. Yeah. And that, that is at the seat of so many gambling addicts' problems, is that they think it's something they're in control of. Don't yeah. worry, I can get myself out of this. It's ego-driven as an addiction in, in, many, in many ways. They're trying to create an image of gambling yeah. as normal as going to a fish and chip shop, having a pint, whatever. Because what happens is that, say those five people in that advert were real, yeah. one of them gets a gambling addiction. Right. They then stop going back with those other four every other week. They start gambling on apps, they start credit cards, maxing out overdrafts, and they obviously would never say this, but what they want is that person who gets addicted because that's how they make their money. Licensees are required to have procedures for interacting with customers who may be at risk of harm and should take account of the level of expenditure incurred by a customer. Over the past three years, we have worked to tackle transparency and fairness issues with regard to promotions 
and practices around free bet and bonus offers. Imagine that's your kids' trust fund, and then you try and get that back by remortgaging your house without your partner knowing. And imagine you try and get that back by taking out credit cards, and then imagine your life falling apart. I guarantee this will not make the final cut. <laughs>